So first of all, um, I'll start off with the frame. Um, as we talked about before, uh, similar to the TRV, uh, we use the new fold-away tongue. This is a same design but a different size. This one's rated up for 7,000 pounds. Um, it's actually rated up for eight, but it, as you lengthen the tongue, the, uh, the, the loading goes down. So we wanted to make the tongue as long as we could to make it easier to maneuver. But it's a four by three tongue. Um, it goes down the center. Our main frame on the outside is a two by three tube steel with a 190 wall, similar to the, the largest trailers we do. And then all the subcomponents we make out of form channel, 10 gauge steel. Uh, from the old trailer design to this one, uh, if you remember right, you had to assemble it, partially assemble it. This one, you don't with the fold away tongue, you just pull the tongue in, lock in your pin, you can actually pull it off the pallet. Um, we also, on the design, we took out a lot of steel because there's a lot of steel in it. We want to get the weight down for uh, loading, so we pulled out probably 30% of steel with this new design. The big comment um, from the previous trailer was serviceability. Um, it was very tight once you got the panels off, it required a lot of bolts to get the panel off, and I think that panel is a one piece design, which made it kind of difficult to get on and off. So, what we did here is we made it just one simple panel. And now what you have here is you have full access to your pump. You got your two oil drains here, your unloaders here, your oil filters here. So again, just thinking of serviceability, one simple panel we pull off and everything is accessible. For the generator and the engine, you can go in the galleyway and everything is accessible from the back. So again, just trying to think of accessibility, serviceability, um, make it so you can get to it. If you need to get more space, you can actually remove these panels as well and that opens up the whole front. How the trailer is made, we actually, it's made in sub-components. So the first thing we do is we build the whole chassis, which includes the tires, the axles, all the wiring, and that's what we base uh, everything else on. The tanks are actually made as a sub-assembly that drop on. This whole chassis here, the, uh, uh, the skid, is actually built in another line. So eventually they all make it to one line where it's all assembled together. So again, uh, for our side, we try to think of uh, manufacturability, trying to speed up the process. So what we do now is we're just going to kind of go around, and I'll just tell you about the different features we have. Um, again, we, we mentioned the jack, just a simple jack fold away, so it's not in your way when you uh, are moving the vehicle. On here, uh, you'll notice a lot, we have a lot of these, we, we actually brought a new tool. It's called a beading tool that actually lets us bead um, these, uh, this channel or this uh, bead into our panels and it provides two things. Uh, one, it provides um, some strength to our panels and then it also gives us some nice features so we can do a nice little curve. We also brought in some new latches. Um, instead of going with like this, the, the chrome ones we have in stock, we actually brought a nice plastic one that's weather resistant. These lock with either key or if you want, you can pull these out and you can put a padlock on it. So the idea is uh, one of the other comments we had was uh, security. So what we did there is got this, and now your tanks, both fuel tanks are loaded, located behind the locked cabin, so you can lock it up at the end of the day, not worry about anybody stealing your fuel. So two 17-gallon tanks, the idea here was to give you enough fuel to run for a full shift. Um, our tanks, our metal tanks, uh, we did consider going to a, uh, a formed, uh, similar type of plastic with all the UL requirements or uh, car compliance, it was a lot simpler and a lot quicker and more economical to go with just uh, the steel tanks. So it's a standard 12 gauge, 12 gauge tanks. Our tanks, we actually have uh, ratcheting caps. We brought in uh, new car compliant caps for this machine. And we also, uh, on our caps, we have fuel indicators. So now you can tell how much fuel you have. And all our caps are now tethered. So this is a part of our carb compliance. Um, these, this cap here is sealed. So we've got air breathers in the back that are tied into our carb system. We actually had a Honda in the plant last week. We brought them over and looked at the machine. Um, they haven't tested it yet, but their preliminary thoughts was it wasn't going to be an issue, which is really good for us. Yeah, but just like your car, when you first open, you just crack it and let it breathe out. But there is a, a breather on the back that goes into the carb system. And then what we did was we brought a different cap in for a diesel, it actually says diesel on it. So right here, um, we designed this as well so you can hold two five gallon buckets. So you can 
put your buckets in here of detergent if you want. Also, you can keep it in the walk cabinets. And then if you look under here, we actually have a quick coupling that goes to a high pressure line, actually comes through here and mounts to the back of our cabinet. And the idea is we can put in our uh, downstream chemical right here and your chemicals right here. And then it goes right to our tanks or uh, to our uh, hose reels. So that's our cabinets. Next is our water tank. Um, it comes with four 100 gallon water tanks. And they're actual 100 gallon tanks. I know before there was an issue, um, we actually had less water. We actually uh, came up with a brand new mold for this machine. We worked with our industrial designer to give it more flair. Um, I always like to say, being engineers, if we'd have an industrial engineer on the board, this would look like a box. So they give us a nice curve. This piece, as I want to point out, it, it looks decorative, but actually provides a support. There's a form channel behind here that prevents them from bowing out. And then all the ribbing, again, it's to prevent that bowing. <coughs> so we wanted to make it look integrated, but yet give it the strength so you don't have any bowing issues. It also acts as your support so the tank won't pop out. Are all four tanks the same? They are. They're all identical. Um, even the logo has logo on both sides. So if you do ever have to replace a tank, it's just one tank. So they're all the same. Again, we're just trying to carry that line with a new tool. Uh, you'll probably start seeing more of this in our product because with this we're able to drop the gauge down and increase the strength. So this is a really neat, uh, neat tool we just brought in. Um, again, standard chrome rims, uh, 3,500 pound axles, and electric brakes with the breakaway kit. It's all standard. So everything you see on this machine, will be how it leaves the factory. Except One brake or two brakes? Except the guard Dual. What's that? Dual brakes. Brakes on both. Yeah. Brake. And I'm sure we'll talk to Marty later, but uh, you know there might be situations where you need surge brakes. Okay, the back here comes with uh, two of our new hose reels. Um, high and low pressure, even though this is still a high pressure hose reel, we use it. Uh, we got our... Uh, for traveling, got a quick connect here so your hose won't fly down the road. And we actually made it, uh, we'll have a separate bracket that attaches to this. So if you want, you can mount a 200-foot reel on this as well. And we made it enough room so that's another option you can do in the field. We also have another valve right here. Uh, one of the requests is the ability to feed from the tanks or direct feed. So you pull your hose out, hook it up to spigots, you can feed your tanks. Or if you want, you throw this, and now you direct feed into the machine. Uh, and all your nozzles are all right here. Uh, we figured the hose rail connects <laughs> here, so make it right there. This is your, uh, this design will change slightly, but the concept's still the same. Um, this is just your rear gate. Now we just figure we can just use it as a step. Okay. Okay. I felt to mention we have a six inch inlet with a stainless tether, so you don't lose your lids. And they're clear, so if you want, you can actually look inside and see if uh, you got water for that. Our galley way, what we did is we tried to put everything off to the side or underneath. Um, you got just under 30 inches, like uh, 29 to 7 eighths, um, right here, and you're about 6 feet long. Real quick, on the back right here again, this is where you have access to the generator and your oil fill on your engine, also your burner. Uh, we, from the traditional design, they had it mounted sideways. We decided to go with this, this orientation so it protects the burner. But you get all the access, all right here, from the back of it. Battery box is right here. Um, again, accessibility, you just pull the battery out, it's right there. The original design, they had 3 16 diamond plate, which is expensive and heavy. And what we did, we actually dropped the floor down to 16 gauge. So we went down probably, uh, I don't know, 60, 70% material. Um, to lighten the load of the machine or the, on the trailer. And then we use the beating tool for two purposes. One is for uh, an anti-grip, so it grips your shoes so you don't slip, and also it provides support. So just by putting the beads in, we're able to drop down the gauge and give it some support. For storage space, another question we had was storage space. What we did is we, we decided to utilize this space underneath. The hose, the 50-foot hose, stores in here. Our nozzle st stores in here for a back system. And then up underneath, tucked away, is a 12 volt high pro pump. It's a centrifugal pump that we use for the vacuum system. So again, just kind of keeping it hidden away so it doesn't get damaged. 
Uh, this is a 40 gallon tank, vacuum tank. Um, I forgot to mention the walls on this is about 0.3. Our vacuum tank will be about 0.4 to 0.5, so it's considerably thick, so they don't crush on us. How it works is uh, you attach your hose to here, up front, you turn on your vacuum system, sucks into here, and your pre filter is a sock. So all your heavy solids should fill in here. We we'll also provide us some handles so you can grab it easier. Um, the previous design didn't have anything to hold on to, so we decided to you know, make it more durable. We also provide those things not just resting, we have some T locks, you can lock it down so you go down the freeway, it's not going to fly off. How is the bag attached? It's just a ring, it's a metal ring. It just tilt and it slips oh. off. Okay. And all these parts uh, we're going to have available um, for spare parts. Inside, um, we actually have two floats, the quick acting floats. Um, one to signal that we have no water, so the pump shuts off, or the feed pump. The other one up here is when you get high water, we'll shut our vacuum off so we don't start sucking water out. Inside, uh, we have a uh, oil filter absorbent bag. Um, it actually has like a carabiner clip that's attached. Um, we're going to actually go to a smaller one. This one's pretty big. It's about this big and this tall. Uh, we're going to see if we can find something smaller that will kind of sit in this cavity. So that's something you'll see different. Um, our vacuum is a vacuum that our sister company uses in Denver in their uh, carpet cleaning systems. It's 110 volts, uh, 105 CFM, and again, it's all running off a generator. So how this works is your water comes in, gets a pre-filter. In the bottom, we have, again, a one-inch brass insert, so you don't have to have a bulkhead you worry about leaking. Underneath that, we actually put a T in with a plug, so you talked about cleaning out the bottom of your tank. Just underneath, you can reach, you can fill this T, and there's a plug in there, so you can just unplug that and drain the water. It's a one inch line, so it should drain quick. Is there no valve on it? There's no valve, yeah. We were thinking about it, but it's because it's behind the tire, we were worried about it getting hit. So, but it's a just a hex head uh, plug. So, underneath the tank, the water gets drawn out through that pump I talked about earlier that's in here. It comes up through here and goes to our first filter, which is a plated, uh, it's going to be a poly filter at uh, 50 microns. And the next phase goes to here, which is a 5 micron carbon filter. And then we go out. From here, we actually added another valve. This gives us option one, is so we can send water through there, which actually dumps water into the two center tanks for reclaiming. Or if you want, you can put a garden hose fitting in, turn it on, and you can drain to wherever you want. We're just leaving that that way because we're not sure how people want to attach it, where they want to put their spigot in or, or whatever, so we're just going to leave it open. So we talked about this earlier about the controls of the machine and how the old style had all the valves and you had to go like through a little check mark. Um, we got rid of that. What we did is we have two valves that control your whole, your whole tank system. Um, again, the outer tanks are linked, so it acts as one tank, and the inner tanks are linked as another tank. So you got your outer tank and your inner tank, and you can open or close it. And then behind there is the filter, so it's pre-filtered, or gets filtered before it goes to our feed pump. But if you want to just run off one tank, let's say your outer tanks, all you got to do is turn them on and shut the other one off. Question we had earlier, if you want to reclaim, we reclaim only to the inner tanks, but if you open up all the valves, the water will grab a feed to all the tanks. So that way you can reclaim all the water back to your system. We also added a third valve for your bypass because there's times you might be using clean water and you don't want to recycle water going back to clean water for uh, bypassing. So that way you have a choice which tank you want to bypass to. You mean bypass off of your own motor? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So inside we got a, an Aquatech transfer pump. It's another 12 volt pump. Uh, this pump we actually work with Aquatech. They sent us various models. So we found one that worked right for this application. Um, so this is a pump specific for this trailer. It has a pressure switch on it, so as it builds up pressure, it'll shut itself off so it's not staying on constantly. The other thing we added too is the other tanks, uh, the old system had floats in there to control uh, your low water shutoff. We actually put a flow meter in, a little flow switch. So one thing that Greg said they had problems with when they tried to run it, they couldn't get the machine to start. Part of the reason why is the water was off. If there's no flow, your machine will not start. 
or if you run out of water, it'll shut your machine off. So as they're washing and they run out of water and it suddenly dies, the first thing you look at is to see if they have water in their tanks. So that, yes. So this is actually tied into the switch. Uh, the new gener or new Hondas are uh, ground ground to start, I believe. So this just opens up that circuit. So it needs a closed circuit. Those two lower valves. When it's when they're on, is that allowing water to be siphoned from the tank to yes. the pressure washer? So if they're okay. all on, that means you're okay. drawing from all tanks. Okay. So and we label them, label them outer tanks, inner tanks to kind of you know those outer tanks and your inner tanks. How do you so, access the filter? You said there's a filter. Yeah, there's right, a filter right behind here. Oh, okay. You can access, or if you want, you can just reach underneath. We have an opening. You can actually pull it that way. Okay. Um, and then it's the uh, I can't remember which filter you said. Banjo. Was. The banjo filter. So you have that little drain you can pre-drain with the water, or pre-drain the water. Um, it's a good filter. feed to the pump. And where does yes. the recycle the water go? It goes into the inner tanks. Inner tanks only? Yes. Okay. So if you want, let's say you're recycling, you can actually have recycle mode where you're just sucking just the recycled water. Okay. Or if you want, you can just, oops, you can actually open them all them up. Now that recycled water will actually eventually gravity feed to the other tanks. So where would you have the valves if you want to use the clean water and then have the recycle mode work? Uh, you would just shut this off. Now your recycled water can't interfere with your clean okay. water. So what we'll do is we'll come up with a list of instructions we'll put in the service manual that will kind of give us just some different scenarios. So we'll, all, we'll have it in there with some little graphics. Now control system, this is where we control the vacuum. So you got your vacuum on off and then you got the small reclaim pump. And then we got a typical burner and uh, thermostat. We also relocated the uh, the controls for the Honda machine up here. This is their hour meter, which has an oil indicator light. And again, that's all from Honda. We also added uh, some on lights, uh, some LED lights, just so you know when your system's on because it gets pretty loud. Behind here, if you remove these four bolts, behind here is a small control box that houses the transformer. So we have a 120 to 24 volt transformer inside with our relays as well to control the vacuum and the pumps. So the whole system we have is all 24 volts. So the only 110 we have is just running to that, which it actually goes through a relay. So again, thinking of safety, you got water, so we wanted to keep this as safe as possible. And so that and transfer and pump is 24 volt? This is 12. 12. Both okay. pumps are 12. But the control system is but 24. But the whole control is okay. 24. So on this outlet, we also have a plug. So this could be a drain right here. You just pull this out, you can put an attachment or just let it drain. This is tied into all the tanks, so you open all the valves, you can actually drain your tanks right here. Your machine is leaking. Or, if you want, what we do is we actually just pull off the filter. Because it's a bigger opening, it'll just drain the whole system. Or what you can do if you want, you can actually put a line on this, and then you can turn your feed pump on, and it'll actually draw the water out of the tank. So if you want to push the water somewhere. <coughs> so this is pretty much our, our control system. Um, again, working with an industrial designer, he kind of came up with all the uh, the symbols and the layouts, just trying to make it look. Uh, it looks great. Look nicer. Ooh, very nice. On our pump and our generator, we actually use the uh, the True Track right. system. So we use the same True Track on our pump, and then we use the same design on the generator. So it's an existing uh, product. So what we have next is I forgot to mention. On the head of our pump, we have what's called a speed control. It's tied to the pressure of the pump. This is actually made by CAT. And what it does is it activates a little arm that actually controls our diverter valve on our exhaust system. We actually have a heat exchanger, the same heat exchanger we use in the uh, carpet cleaning industry. We bypass our exhaust through that to preheat the water. And our first initial test, we're getting right around between at the lowest of 10, but as high as 15. Um, Fahrenheit and the delta T. And what we're going to do now, it's a stainless coil. We're actually going to do some more testing with the copper coil as well because we can get better heat, heat exchange rates. Um, and also, when we talk to the people that use them, um, they thought this application would be fine to use. So that could be a change we come with. Is, uh, we're hoping to bump up that, uh, that heat exchange. What would that translate into, uh, say, gallons per hour fuel savings? Um, I don't have the exact number, that's something we'll, we're going to get, but like on a burner, this machine requires a 2.5 burner, and we had to drop it down to a 2.25.
because we get too much heat. So, yeah. You combine, you'll look, it's a box. That's actually stainless. It's all stainless. Our concern was corrosion because all your water should be running through it. So it's an all stainless part that we just paint to make it look better. One of the comments was... Uh, Eco. Is they wanted fuel savings. So one of the fuel savings would be um, less like fuel burning. So getting a, you know 10 to 15 percent cost in fuel savings just on the burner. Plus with the new Honda we have in here, again as David mentioned, it's actually equivalent to a 21 horse, but it actually puts out enough power to a 24. So we get even uh, more fuel savings on our new Honda.